for most events, I don't really care that much who I'm playing against. I mostly care just about my own performance. But for this tournament, for the history of this tournament series, I think most people would be very, very disappointed if me and Mango did not end up in Grand Finals. And I share that feeling as well. It feels like this tournament series, it's our, our series, our rivalry. It should be decided here. First one, we place first and second. I kind of look at it uh, like the Rocky movies, you know? The first movie, Rocky's coming in as the underdog, no one knows what he's all about. Apollo Creed is the champion of uh, America, and Rocky almost wins. And then at Genesis 2, Mango's gonna be Try Hard Mango, and yeah, I guess Rocky won in the end. So, I don't know, for my sake and for the community's sake, I think it would be for the best if Mango and I end up in Grand Finals at this specific tournament. But it's going to be very, very rough. Uh, it's a lot of good players out there. We'll see. Uh, I'm hoping for it, but I will concentrate on my own part and the rest is up to Mango. Genesis as a tournament series means very, very much to me. Uh, I would say it's the single most important tournament series for me. Melee at the time, around Genesis 1, it was kind of the revival of Melee, the true revival, I want to say. And Genesis 1 was the first time when America's Best and Europe's Best were finally playing in, against each other for the first time. And I started in 2005 and playing Melee competitive. Uh, I thought I was very, very good at the time. Obviously, I was not. I got wrecked in pools. Uh, I did not make it out of pools. And I was very, very salty at first. But when I was watching the grand finals and everyone's like cheering, everyone's happy, everyone's hyped, I was like, one day that will be me. One day that will be me sitting in grand finals in like America. Because I'd been watching uh, videos of Ken, Bomb Soldier, uh, and a few others, of course. And from that tournament, I decided I want to be the best in the world. And I realized that, that I will need to travel to America for that. And eventually, I realized that, okay, I'm pretty good at this game now. I was some months, maybe half a year before uh, Genesis 1. So I really wanted to travel there. I didn't have the money. So I asked my grandparents if I could borrow $1,000 to go there. I won pound three in East Coast, you know, they're being buttheads. They're like, no, it was a fluke, it was a fluke. And I, I guess you could see why it would be a fluke, you know, it's just like, you can't do it again, can't do it again. And it's funny how ROM 1 started. It was just a, a weekly, and I went into the Smashboard thread, and it was like a $100 pop bonus for if any out-of-stater won. 
and 100 bucks at the time is like game changer. Like nowadays, that's like 5,000, but back in the day, that 100 meant a lot. I was just like, I'm gonna show up and I'm gonna beat you guys again. So I was started talking smack, and then they were like, no, no. So it turned into this whole thing that out of nowhere, was like Canada showing up, Florida showing up. So like just off that one thing, it started a chain reaction. Brawl had just come out, so Melee was just laying low. It really was a revival. It's like, everyone's like, wait a minute, Mango vs. Meets King, I want to watch that. And then, you know, Florida comes, Canada comes. Like, even Lovage came with me for no reason. Zoo came with me. So it's like, randomly it just turned into something special. And then uh, I didn't drop a set. Beat Meets King pretty, pretty convincing in winners. Um, even in, we played in Grand, you know, after the Shiz match. And he looked at me, he's like, he's like, I don't want to play mains, you want to play? Because he, like, didn't want to play my pub because he needed he knew what was up at the time. This is pre sport days, people were saying mean things, you know, like, and I'm like still like 17, 18, but you know, I always handled it pretty well. So I went to their house, you know, just like, you know, just handled business. And it wasn't until that moment, then they're like, okay, Mango, like, even Scar after I like, came up to me was like, dude, like, you're actually hella legit. They actually paid their respects, which was really cool. So they let me borrow the money, and in the upcoming months, I was practicing more and more and more. And I became the best in Europe in the meantime, winning two pretty big events. I imagined Americans to be 10 times better than me, so I would never let myself rest, pretty much. I was like, okay, I need to grind more, they're still better, I need to grind more. A few months before Genesis, people were talking like, oh, uh, if or when you win Genesis. Some people were like, when? Like, it almost was a sure, sure thing. But I think they were partly joking, for the most part. But they wanted to believe that we could uh, prove for America that we also had good players. For America, a lot of them did not think I would make top 32 even. You know, it's very different styles, it's a different version of the game. Uh, it's a lot of things traveling from Europe to America. It can't even be compared if Americans travel to Europe. Just because we don't have nearly as many good players. So when Europeans travel to America, you have to be ready from the first game pretty much. Maybe not these days because now Smash have been growing so much. So the average level is maybe not as high, even though it's way more good players. But back then, it was so many players you didn't have never heard about. That was still very good. So eventually me and Eniolas, we came to Genesis 1 and it was so much bigger. Like the biggest tournament I had been to in Europe was way smaller. Everyone was like so hyped. It was a different environment for sure. I knew who Mango was. Uh, I saw the Pound Free videos, or some of them. I remember uh, the ending on Corneria, uh, the up throw, until uh, whatever it's called. I don't know, what is it called even? The R-Wing. R-Wing, yeah. End to arrest. So, yeah, I saw some games from Mango. I remember seeing him and Mute King from Revival of Milo, I think it also was, when he played Falco versus the Marth. It was one tournament at least. So, I knew he had both of the Puff, I knew he had the Falco, I knew he was the best player. I knew what he looked like. He actually came up to me as one of the first people after I entered the venue. And we were shaking hands, we introduced each other to each other, and he wanted to play. Like, he knew I was the best from Europe, and I knew he was the best from America, so he wanted to have some games and let's play. Honestly, I didn't even like, pay him the respect of like watching his videos. Like, to us, the only world that existed in Smash was like America. And like that was like unknown territory with you know a bunch of jabronos. I saw my I saw one of his matches. I'm like, eh. like I thought nothing of it. I'm pretty sure I posted that he like wasn't even gonna make it out of pools. Uh, we only played two, and the first one I actually won, and people were like, "What is happening?" Right. But then Mango won the second one, and I think people were like, "Okay, it's back to what it should look like." I think we went one one, if I remember correctly. I think we went one one, and like I said hi to him. You know, it's like, you know, you come to my, my, my my home, oh, I'll be nice, I'll show show respect, you know, because it's a long travel, you know, so I was like, I'll say hi, he's like, hey, he spoke terrible English, you know, had the long hair, the hat, just completely looks completely different than what he looks like now. And also many people don't know about his uh, Daisy Dukes he wore that were like way up here, like so high up and like, I don't know, I guess that's cool in Europe, but like, so everything about the way he looked was like funny, I'm like, this guy plays Melee? Like, there's no way this guy's any good at Melee. So I talked to him, we played 1-1 one, one, and like we're like good games. And I remember walking away like, eh, like eh, nothing special, nothing special. So I think we, he beat me like on FD, Falco Peach. I was like, man, like I'm not I'm not impressed, you know. So it's kinda of funny that we went 1-1 one, one, and then that was that was it. That's all we played until you know tournament. I think during the tournament people started to realize I was good. Maybe they thought I would place in the top 32 or top uh, 16 or whatever. He beat 
Shiz, who was like probably top five at the time, you could argue. He beat like Mewtwo King, and I was like, whoa, like, <laughs> like, cause no one just beats Mewtwo King, like, uh, it's like you got to be something to beat Mewtwo King. So it wasn't until then where I realized like, oh wait, this guy might actually be legit, you know. And it was like the whole Genesis one was cool, cause it was like, obviously I'm the best. I'm handling my my business on this side of the bracket. And then you got this European guy like climbing his way. It's like, oh man, is he gonna play Mango? Like Mango Armada? Like is it gonna happen? Is it gonna happen? I was a bit nervous for most of my sets at Genesis 1. If a pretty good player from Europe does bad, you can always say like, oh, we didn't have our best player. But this time it was undeniable. Like I was the champion of Europe. And if I do bad, you can't say like, oh, this player is gonna do better. Like who's gonna believe that? No one, and they should not. If your best player fail, well, that sucks. At that moment, the winner's final playing is Mango. It was supposed to, for us to have one song each and he was picking the song Eye of the Tiger from the Rocky movies and I don't know in that set playing against him I just had a fun time I was like digging the song I just had a good time I didn't feel nervous at all uh, I just realized that I have accomplished accomplished a lot so far and from this time forward, I will just enjoy the ride. He started off with Puff, a matchup I've always, since my first tournament, hated. I've always hated Puff, I've hated her rest, her back airs, everything with that character is not me. I started Puff and like, back in the day, like during that time, I was like, Puff was my best character, but I, I felt, and you know, I probably was, better than everyone by so much that like, I didn't even use Puff. I played Falco, Falcon, whatever, so it's like, I went Puff and I hadn't played her in a while and like he just, I think he like 3 stocked me, he like destroyed me. And I was like, okay, like, okay, I'm not, I, like, Puff's not ready, I didn't practice, because I didn't even practice like any different going up to the tournament. I was just like, free win for me, like I'm better than all these guys. But you know, Armada beat my Puff and I was like, Ugh. I was like, okay, <laughs> worry about that later. I go Falco and then I win game two and I was like, okay, sick. It was uh, a completely, completely different side. Sort of like Shizwiz, it was much in your face, always jumping around. Game two, he won in Yoshi's, his counter pick. By far his best stage with Valko, I would say. It's very small, his aggressive style is paying off more. You can't really run away from him. Like, there we go, this is, I might as well just play the character I've been playing. I felt like he might go back to Puff, but I am okay with FD versus Puff. That was probably my best stage in the matchup. And you had a Shane grab some Falco. It was very, very tight, but I managed to win. Before a big upset is about to happen, everyone in the crowd at one point starts to think, what if? And after game three, I felt like the crowd was thinking, what if? What if the best American player is gonna get sent to the loser bracket by a European? What if we are actually not the best continent in this game? What if this random guy is taking our event? I feel like that pressure it was probably getting to Mango's head a little bit as well. People were cheering for him, but I remember that it was not the same as early on in the turns, early on in the sets versus New King and Shizwiz. That was more faith. People really was truly convinced that their player would win. But after like game three, it was more desperation. People were like, come on, come on, Mango, please, please. Like, it was more that, the desperation. But they still wanted to support him, but just, all, all people in the crowd having this sort of mentality, what if, I, I guess that gave me a bit more power that people were afraid. And once people get afraid in Smash, that's the time to strike. I remember fifth game, I, I was up and I went for like some edge guard and I got hit by his umbrella and I died at like 40. I remember that was like ugh, like a mango heartbreak before there were like mango heartbreaks. Like that was one of like the first ones where it's like, oh, what are you doing out there? I managed to clutch it out. I remember uh, in game five, last stock, I was about to finish off the game. And to this day, I can't be entirely sure if this was on purpose, but I was doing up B outwards, dodging the move very, very precisely. And then I was sneaking over that forward smash. So I was a bit lucky, 
a bit of a good play for sure. Uh, and yeah, the rest of the set is history. So, you know, I lost, and I remember the whole room was just like, whoa, like, everyone just like, like, it was just shocked, like, it, no one could believe it, it's like, who is this guy, and like, he just be Meats King, he be Mango, I needed that reality check, I guess I'm not, like, undisputedly the best, you know, it's like, this guy's here, and I remember I walked off the stage, and I looked at someone, I don't remember who it was, but someone's in there, and they were like, dude, you got this, and I was like, I'm not worried. In Grand Finals, it was actually more one-sided, early on, I remember I three-stocked three him the first match, I mean, Funny thing is that a lot of Europeans, even to this day, uh, joke about it that if I didn't win first match so big, he might have been staying with Falco. Well, actually, first game I started Falco, right? And then he destroyed my Falco, and I was like, I was like, okay, I'm just like, you know what? If I'm gonna lose, I'm gonna go down with Puff. So I was like, I'm just playing Puff, you know? And you know, most people don't like floaty against floaties, but like that set was like probably one of the best like floaties ever. It's just like, Cause I was playing, like I wasn't like just spamming stuff, like we were actually going head to head. And second game I'm up pretty much the entire match, but I barely, barely lost. Mango. Shit, Mango! It's like this motherfucker, man, he's like trying to come up in here. Game three, I went very convincingly. Oh, shit! Oh. But I remember he hit the stitch face combo and then he taunted and I was like... A lot of times they actually can't get out of it. So fair stitch face, a lot of times, is pretty much a true combo. And then I re-grab the stitch face and I see that he's like trying to challenge me. And I'm like, all right, let's throw it again and let's see what happens. And it's like in the floaty matchup to just lose a stock like that. It's like, uh... so I was already in a bad spot. That's when the rest happened, right? So pretty sure there was a moment in, um... The first set we played, where I had Puff, we were using that same situation where he was shielding, and he rolled. I was like, okay, I'm gonna remember that. Like, I'm like, if he's in the spot, he might do it again. And like, the whole lead up, everything about it, like, Brandon on commentary, like, man, it's like, it gets so hype, and like, just like, the stars couldn't align any better, and like, you know, that's my sub noise to this day. It's like, even like, when I hear it, if I watch that video, no matter what, I always get the chills. Like, no matter what, I get the chills. Like, even talking about it, I get, I get a little chilly, because like, I was down, that was it, Mango the Hero was fallen. And it's like, this guy's outplaying me in neutral like every time, he's just like better than me a little bit. Just a little bit better than me and it's like, oh, I just, I need something, you know? And I remember it sets up, so I take his stock, I remember I do an up smash to kill him. Pretty sure up smash was like a total accident. But you know, it killed him, whatever. And then like, the, I remember the crowd, like people started standing up because it was like, this is it, like, is our Mango really gonna lose to this guy? And um, it just set up and I'm like, if I'm like, if I see any opportunity to rest, I'm going for it. Like, I need something to like, you know, pick me up. And uh, it was there, we're standing there. And in my head, I'm like, fuck yeah, like, let's do it. To this day, I've only ever gone for that specific rest once. That's the only time I've ever like, read someone's role like that and jumped and got like to this day I think it's the only one and I remember when I hit it like the place was like I and, like even to this day like in all the smash events I've been like I've been part of like a lot of hype moments where like people were up but like something about that was like in the air like everyone just like lost it like you know Alex picked up the chair like he was so hyped he picked up a chair like how how hyped do you have to be to just pick up the chair you're sitting on you know so it's like everyone like that mo and then Armada you could just like from the way he was like just done like he was so like you could tell he was done after that i think that's the first time i started to like really play shaky that was the first time when my nerves really like i lost control of it the next game starts i'm like up three stocks to one but he almost brought it back like it actually went down because i got lazy i did like the classic i was up three stocks to one against the peach i'm like whatever dude and i'm like riding the hype the crowd's like losing it i was behind like the entire game five and I think I lost pretty much all my confidence, but then I do remember at one point during the match, I'm like, all right, this, this sucks, this sucks. And I was like, 
for a split of a second, and a lot of people don't trust me on this, but it's actually the truth. I got reminded of the match between Amsa and EK, that the only thing that made EK lost in the biggest comeback of all time was that he got too confident. So I decided to actually roll into Mango, get rested, and pray that he's gonna play like an idiot. I'm pretty sure I've heard him say that like he ate that one because he knew the crowd. I would get hyped and I would start playing worse because I'm more hyped. But I also think that's full of shit because that was like back in the day, like no, I never... That moment of like me getting hyped and playing for the crowd wasn't really a thing. So I, I don't know, I believe him, I, but I, I still think he's full of shit. But I give him the top player respect, benefit of the doubt. But I still don't believe him. He started paying no respect to me anymore, it's like he has all the momentum. And little by little, I keep climbing back. When I'm doing that, that means I'm comfortable. Like even if I miss, I'm like, I always have to play my game. The second I don't play my game, I lose. Like if I start playing their game, I, I can't win. I suck at their game, but I'm really good at what I do. So it's like, stuff like that just gets me hype. And then like once I know, I'm like, start swagging on them. And I just get inside there, it's like, man, this guy's styling on me. He's like throwing away stocks. You can just see the momentum. It's like the other guy starts falling apart. They start falling for dumber things. So it's like, I always say I just have to play my game, so it's like that dash dance was just me, like, having fun. I think at the end of the day, you gotta have some fun with it, and, um, I'm just happy it rolled, because that clip's so cool. That was the fastest puff dash dance in the history of time. And I remember it went down to, like, last hit somehow, like, he brought it back so hard, and I started getting nervous, I'm like, I'm like, I cannot lose, like, after that happened, and, like, I have a three, so I'm getting in my own head, and I'm like, oh my god. So I just started, there's one point on stadium, we're, like, in the middle of the stadium, just throwing out aerials and missing, like, the most nervous aerials. Like, he was, like, pretty close to like I think hitting me with an up air or something I would have died and we're just like missing missing and then I get like a back air or something I don't remember how it ended specifically but I remember I hit it and the whole crowd's like <gasps> and then he died yeah and everyone just like exploded because he died at like 180 so it's like yeah everyone's like yeah and then after that like it was done it literally comes down to the last hit and I was down like three stocks to one that shouldn't even be possible to make a comeback off in that matchup unless you are super confident and you start playing way worse Next set starts, like I beat him, like it's just, you know, the rest is history, it's just a 3-0. But yeah, Mango will clutch it out, and then in set two, I think I gave, gave it my all in the first set. And I couldn't really climb back from that, and Mango got a huge momentum boost from winning that first set. So the second set, except for game one, was pretty much a steamroll. Uh, I didn't really have much to compete with at that point. Pulled out his Fox. They I wish I forced dogged it to this day, that would have been the best way to end it. My Fox had ev never ever played a single match against the Puff going into that match pretty much. It's over. <laughs> it's, it's free. And I was like, the Fox, no Fox could beat my Puff at the time. I was like, you know, I always played with like Joey and Alex, so I always, that's my matchup. Even to this day, like, when I do play Fox against Puff, I still like it in a weird way. Even when I'm getting camped, it, like, it brings me back to like my old days of people trying to camp me, but, and then they just get smacked up. So like... I just, I, I love that matchup, and uh, when he did it, I'm like, there's no way his Fox is, like, nowhere near as good as, like, so I was like, and then once he did it, like, in my head, I'm like, it's over. And then, like, I rest him eight seconds in, I'm like, it's super over. It's like, you're done. It's just like, you're done. After being down 2-0, I was like, all right, I'll bring out the Fox, see what happens. Uh, but with so little experience, with, like, partly the matchup, partly with the character, and him having all the momentum, it, it was... Yeah, it was not a good decision, but I was like, I don't, I know I would not win with Peach anyway. So it was like the 1% chance I went for it, and I don't regret it, even though it clearly did not pay off. But, uh, you know, I just had the momentum, and like the crowd was like so on my side. I mean, usually they are on my side, but like that time was like the first ever, like, because no one ever cheered for me as much. Like, you know, obviously now I'm like the fan favorite, everyone knows that. But back in the day, it's like no one really cheered for me because I was the favorite. So it's like, you, you can't just go crazy for the fit. Like, you can't cheer. So, like, I never really got cheered for it, but in that moment, everyone was, like, mango. Like, everyone was on my side. Like, pretty sure it was, like, three peach mains in the crowd not cheering for me. For the most part, it was, like, all mango. You know, that was, like, the original, like, we got to cheer for mango. Mango needs to win this. So um, just winning that was sick just because, you know, I got to defend. That was, like, the first time I defended America. But, like, everyone after, like, had so much respect for Armada. It's like, how could we not, you know? And, um... Armada coming just and performing as well he did definitely like sparked up melee. Like that's just important. Like that was definitely like there's like big moments in history. Like in Smash history, that's definitely like like a staple. Like that was we needed that and that like got things hyped up and it's like now Armada's coming. Can't let Armada win. You're All right. right. Awful. So absolutely awful. <laughs> Going on. So the key thing here I want to highlight is you know SSBM Ring came out. 
quite telling statistic here is Armada and Hungry Bucks only drop one game. Armada's Peach does not have problems with dropping random games to people. The defensive game, the punish game, He's all that fortress. stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. To, to quote Duck, uh, he thinks Armada's playing really bad this weekend. Uh, he says, Armada was playing so bad that he dropped a game to SJJ. And I, I looked at it, I was like, dude, SJJ's really good. He was like, yeah, but he's Armada. And, and I sort of agreed with him um, because I actually looked back at some of his matches after, after he said that, and I was like, you know what? I don't actually think Armada played that well. I think this we just we saw like Armada's C-level play, and C-level play happens to get him into winter semis. Yeah. I think today he could come in at a completely different level. I think this will be close than people think it will be. I think automatically we're like, okay, if he still guys in activity issues and Armada's at the top of his game, this is like prime Armada we're looking at. Yeah. If I will be honest, I watch uh, all the Peach players, but it was actually boring to see Peach players play. <laughs> so I want to try to uh, change Peach meta game. I think like looking back at the event, I was like, yeah, I, I did pretty good, and I will make sure to win the next one. But then something happens, and I like I got fourth at pound, and then I got like second and second. So I started to like develop this uh, second place curse. And after pound four, Mango stopped entering tournaments like seriously. He played Mario or Falcon. It was pretty obvious that he's not gonna try to win these kind of events, which was sad for me in a sense because I was like I wanted one real second chance. But a while before Genesis two, he said he was gonna come back. He was gonna be try hard, so I was really excited for Genesis 2. And then I also heard they were gonna use the same venue and stuff. And I was like, I had to go back here to finally take my revenge. Like, I think to take my final revenge, I need to go back to where it all started. So I was super excited to see Mango back. I was super excited to go back to the place where it all started. I didn't even play Fox that much in friendlies, to be honest. Like, I just played him here and there, kind of like Falco more, but for some reason, like, I feel like when um, my Fox gets momentum in top eight, it just, like, it can steamroll with it. All right, man. You already know what it is. We have finals, the rematch. Niggas is hype, son. Genesis won, I was in grand finals, winner side, pound five. I was also in winner side, grand finals. So it was a little bit similar to these events, and but I, I was trying to still like not thinking about it because I knew like I had this second place curse. Usually when I'm playing it's all kind of a blur. I don't really remember specifically unless you know it's like 2.4 or something stands out so heavy. But um, I don't really remember much. I just remember going back and forth and being like man this, guy, <laughs> this guy's a brick wall man. Oh. Oh. Compared to every other fox more or less, I had never really experienced the same speed. He definitely wanted it more than me. 
Everybody is on Mango's side right now, son. Armada is doing his best. Armada's still holding it down, though. Despite the crowd, Armada's still... I did have a lot of my friends there. I had my brother there. So I finally felt like in America I had like support for the first time. So I felt like it was a little bit more uh, comfortable to play when I knew like some of them were like standing almost right next to me and was cheering me on. And I used to try to live in the moment. He just came into it more prepared, more mentally ready. There it goes! Swag! Swag! First Genesis all over again. I know. Man. Come on, has got to slow the pace of the game down. You got to keep the crowd quiet too. Yeah. I think that set was really good for me. Like people always talk about Genesis two set because it's like we're just running at each other. I'm like, there was like no camping. It was just like back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. He's so good at trading. Like if I don't, if I approach him wrong, I'm dead. Like it was a lot of fun. Like. That's like towards when the meta started getting a little more punish heavy. So that was like kind of the start of it. We brought it down room for air. One more win on my fix it. I'm throwing him up. Yeah, man. Same shit, different turns. Yeah. Like it went game five. I think game five would be me pretty, pretty convincing. But like the rest of the matches were just like back and forth. It was just like a slobber knocker, you know. Man, go! Man, go! Man, go! Man, go! Man, go! Armada finally did it. I'm happy for him, man. He deserved the fuck out of that. He finally won. This shit, Armada. Congrats to Mango. Even though I lost, I think it was really good for Melee. Because at the time, you know, like, that was pretty much a top level play. It was just like, like, you know, back and forth. I think that was his first tournament win in America, actually. It's good for him. Like, what better tournament to have as his first win than, like, Genesis 2? So, you know, I, at the end of the day, I was happy for him. I had a good time. I got second. Um, put on a show for the people. So overall, it was, you know, cool, cool little experience, and I was definitely happy for him. He won his first tournament. It's like, all right, we had to give him one eventually, you know. So it's like, you know, I was okay with it, ultimately. Looking back at it today, I think my Genesis 1 run was fantastic. Uh, I wish I could have been able to pull it off, but I also feel like I overcome a lot of hard things from, like, getting these, like, second places all the time, and then finally, finally win. That's why I consider Genesis 2 my biggest win of all time in singles because I finally managed to overcome all the problems I had of winning in grand finals, especially also since I beat PPMD, HBox, and Mango in the reverse order of how I lost to them. At Genesis, I really wanted to do it because Armada did his part, he got to Grants. And he like got there pretty... I don't think he had any struggles. I think like Kevin took a game off him. I think he destroyed Hungerbox at tournament winners. So Armada did his part and I was like, alright, I'm coming at him. Like, we're gonna do this, man. We're gonna do this. I heard so many people say that, oh, I want to see you versus Mango. That's the way it has to be. Like, it's no other way. It's gonna be a disappointment, like, if this doesn't happen. We gotta make this happen. We gotta make this happen. I remember people were tweeting like, you know, I always believe in a Mango Loser run, but this one looks, this might be one of the hardest ones yet. And I remember I just woke up and it's just like, I don't know, I just, I always wake up on day three and I'm like always in losers. It's like so normal, it's just like whatever, like. And I honestly think it helps me because I'm a momentum based player. So when I'm playing in losers, I just play a lot. I saw Mango walk up and I told him, I did my part, now it's up to you. Spy Nintendo versus C9 and Mango, and we have seen Mango fall to many an Ice Climber player in his illustrious career. I never really feel that like, it's like, oh my god, I'm playing on this big stage. I never, I've never felt that. I'm just like, I'm gonna play Melee. At the end of the day, like, I've been playing Melee for like 10 plus years, and I always say, like, it's just another day in the office. You know, it's just, well, I'm just playing Melee, you know, sport players, like, they're probably, I'm just playing basketball. Like, it's, you know, game seven of the finals, but I'm playing basketball, you know. taking it 
in convincing fashion over some places with 10 dude. I don't even want to say that Bucksberry should suck this because you probably can't do anything to you. Right now. Yeah, Mango, the Mango's on his spirit bomb. When you're in the zone, you're in the zone, and like it really is like a real thing to just like be so locked in on something. Different guy he's playing right now. This, you know, this is Mango, man. Barely man, making through day two. And, yeah, and day two dominates. Yeah, day two, Mango, Mango is. Uh, the tournament ended on day two. Mango will lose. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I rode the hype really well at Genesis. Like, I didn't let it like affect my play or anything. I was just like super amped up on it. That's a Pikachu dash. Yeah. You, you oh no! Oh. And the and crowd, that, the crowd does not care. The crowd does not care at all. They're that like, works. yes, yeah, we get. This is what we wanted to see, but actually, you never see that from him. I think the other players will never admit it, but they get a little scared when they see me playing well. They're like, oh no, I have to play Mango. Like Mango's, you know, like playing like Mango. You never see flubs like that. All right, guys. That, that, we're one set great. away from getting what you all are waiting for, man. Yeah. Armada. Yeah, man. You got to get through the box, though. You got to get through number two. Oh, yeah, and number two has been having his number. Game five, I think, me versus Hungry Box at Genesis is like, it's like in the top five, like, most important games in Melee history. It's strictly what was on the line. It's like either Hungry Box is the villain and he stops the Mango Armada, or Mango's the hero and we get Mango. Because everybody. I think even HBox a little bit in his heart wanted Mango Armada. I think everybody in their heart wanted it. As a Melee fan, it's like, especially like now we're like in this big auditorium, it's like, there's like 100,000 viewers. Like this is like, like you don't want HBox Armada Grand, like you just, I think something in him didn't want it, maybe, I don't know. But, you know, that was like so super important last stock. He like messes up his DI, get like a pretty lucky bear I wouldn't get on him normally. And he just like, pff, DI's like terrible.
Once it was over, it was kind of like a relief. It's like, cause when you go on those runs, man, I'm telling you, like, and now we have lights to listen. So I was sweating. Like, if you, I've never sweat that much in my life. Like, I was, I like put my whole soul into that run, man. I was like, let's go, let's go. And um, I'm usually not very emotional when I play. I'm pretty like, but like Genesis, I was pretty emotional. I was like happy every time I won. Like, I was sweating. There was so much sweat. My hair was so like, it reminds me of like PPMD's beard. Um, remember at Apex after an Apex run, it's a beard just gross and sweaty. So 15 was the worst year of my melee career, just like, pretty much didn't do anything. I didn't do anything that year. People were like, already like, mangoes washed up, blah, blah, blah. People were like, hella smack talking me, and I was like, man. And you always like, I never want to believe it, but at some point when you lose so much. I remember when I lost last year's big house, there's a picture of me like, just super defeated after. Cause then it's like, oh, maybe I do suck. Maybe like, maybe, maybe I don't got it anymore. Maybe I can't compete in the meta. So it's like, but like, like, I've never been happy about getting second, but at Genesis, I was actually pretty proud of myself. I was like, okay, you still showed that you got it. Like, you threw out all these good players. You took Armada second set. At the end of the day, me and Armada split sets, and we went 4-4 four, four in matches, I think. So it's like, you know, it's just my fault for being losers, but I was overall happy with the way I played. I was like, no, we still got it, baby. Like, we can still compete, you know? Like, you can't sleep on me yet, you know? So, um, for me, that was just big, like, like, fuck yeah. Like, <laughs> yes, I knew I could still do it. Like, I knew I still had it. And I was happy for Adam, you know, um, I'm always happy for him when he wins, you know. When anyone beats me, like, and I played well, it's like, well, you know, you got it. Like, sometimes you're gonna get me, sometimes I'm gonna get you. So I was happy for him. Um, and yeah, I mean, I got a bunch of subs and stuff, so it worked out for me. I felt like I won, and I hate when people say that, they're like, oh, I felt like I won, but I, they obviously didn't win the tournament, but that was the closest I ever got to being, like, pretty okay with it. I was like, yeah, but you know, you, you did what you had to do. Fell a little short, but you know, you... You put on a show and like, like I said, I got a bunch of subs, so it worked, it worked out. I was happy.
I remember that moment was hype. Alex ran up, hugged me. He actually hurt my he, when he hugged me, he hurt me, and uh, that's probably why I ended up losing. But uh, 